It's a great pleasure to welcome back to What's Next, Brett Orwin from Nexio. He is the Executive Head of Department, Network and Collaboration at Nexio South Africa. And Nexio is a trusted IT services provider that helps businesses to modernize their environments and adopt new technologies. Now, they are experts in solving legacy and business challenges by streamlining and transforming the IT portfolios of their clients. Brett, fantastic to have you with us again. I mean, it's been an interesting two years uh, with with the pandemic and uh, boy, oh boy, this modernization and digitization of organizations has been absolutely moving at breakneck speed in the, in the last two years. And there's like no end in sight. You know, this transformation is happening all over the place. Today, we're going to be talking about Cisco Intersight. Now, can you start off by telling us what exactly is Cisco Intersight? Thanks, Aki. Yes, so Intersight is an interesting one, new, new solution on the market, const- constantly evolving at the moment, but quite interesting in the wording of Intersight. So first of all, visibility, site is there, right? So visibility, and it's all about, uh, let's call it, talk about data centers, so the visibility into your data center environment, but far beyond that. So really, um, Intersight meaning many sites, uh, and whether those are on your own premises, in the cloud, uh, uh, wherever they are, it's all about sort of an as-a-service a software platform that sits in Cisco's cloud that then gives you visibility, operational management, um, security management, and deployment management. But what really makes it different is that in the old days, we used to have a network operations center looking after the infrastructure, so the bare bones hardware side and the servers. And then we had a different team with software looking after the applications and above that, right, and the performance. Whereas Intersight combines all of that. Um, really, really powerful. We're really excited about this and, uh, yeah, looking forward to take take this to market aggressively within our own market. What are the various integrated Cisco Intersight services and what exactly are they enabling, Brett? So I think, you know, the first thing is what with any environment like this, we'd like to be able to monitor so we're talking about servers, we're talking about cloud. So we'd like to have a very detailed view of the hardware, the analytics, the comparisons, the, the summary, how many servers do we have? And we'd like to be able to also have widgets that then talk to and control how we want to vis- you know, visualize that as a team, right? So for our customers and also perhaps for in our own knock where we're doing it for on the behalf of a customer. In addition, we'd like to know whether all of that hardware is, is uh, ultimately in compliance. So, you know, uh, these days there are so many different vulnerabilities out there. Uh, you know, we, you know this from a security point of view. You talk about uh, advisories that come through. So really, um, what about drivers that are on hardware level uh, in a server? You know, or what about software that might be affected by some of the latest, uh, you know, breaches that come out, etc. So all of that, wouldn't it be great just to have all of that uh, integrated as well? And then the telemetry. Um, In the old days, if you'll know, you've been around the likes of Cisco, you had to log a tech case, then you got in in touch with an engineer, and then you submitted a whole lot of information to that engineer. These days, these kind of products and this solution can do all of that automatically, even to the point that the tech guy calls you. So says, listen, you've got something dodgy going on with your server. So, you know, all of that information is to hand. There's the tech cases get logged automatically and up, files are uploaded from the logs, etc. also automatically. And then, you know, lastly, you might have wondered, well, how does all of this connect? You know, how do you connect all these different data centers to this fantastic platform? And this guy has something called the device connector. So you plug that into your various environments, whether they are on-prem or whether they're in AWS or wherever they are in the cloud, and that then securely pulls back this information that I've just you know described back into into uh, the cloud. So you know I think you'll agree in terms of the visibility from an operations point of view, uh, deployments, you know things like for example deploying a new server with an application uh, can all be done in one place now. You know, in addition to what I've just described in terms of all the services. So these are the kind of things that our Cisco is bringing to the party with Intersight. Fascinating. When you look at the trends in the market right now, and I mean, there's so many interesting trends, how are they related to this? 
Okay, so we all know that everybody's moving to the cloud, not everybody, but there's a lot of this discussion around cloud migration, security. What about when my application ends up in the cloud, what is it going to perform like? What's the network like because it's in the cloud? How would I be able to control all this? And then obviously, other than security being top of mind, what about the costs? So people are wanting to understand CIOs out there and CEOs out there wanting to understand all of these different things. So how do I get uh, visibility once my application, and that's so critical to my business, has migrated into the cloud? Is it secure? How does it perform? What is the network that's supporting it? And what happens if when I deploy it into the cloud, it actually uses less resources than I expected? Can I scale back on my costs? You know, how can I get a bit of flexibility in that space? So really, that's again where we talk about market trends, and this is how the Intersight solution plugs in. Brett, what is the Cisco Intersight workload optimizer? Right, so we talked about things like applications that we've just discussed. So let's just imagine you have an application that's doing a database for you or it's uh, managing your business. It's, you rely, your entire business relies on this application and you migrate that into the cloud. Now, what about being able to understand all the way from the RAM and base level power cooling all the way right up to the application level, you know, what, how is this over time, how is this application performing? Does it need some more RAM? Does it need more disk? Does it need less disk? How can I optimize that? Uh, what is the network, you know, is the network running at the right, uh, you know, in, inbound into the cloud? Is it running at the right sort of, uh, you know, bandwidths, etc.? Are we monitoring all that? And then being able to adjust my, uh, we use the word TIN, right? Adjust the TIN to support the hardware, uh, sorry, to support the ap application itself, um, you know, to optimize what I'm trying to achieve from a business point of view. So that's what Workload Optimizer does. It looks at the application and then everything required for you to be able to run your business, you know? So, and, and it constantly optimizes that. Uh, and in some cases also tells me, you know what? You don't need all these resources. You can actually cut back on your spend here or you need to increase your spend because you're running out of RAM, or all those things. And all of that can be done either automatically or positioned to the user, and then the user makes those decisions and click, click, click. But you know, to me, that's very, very powerful and uh, really an interesting. It's all about applications these days and their performance. Now, there's been a lot of hype around the cloud. Um, and you know, the adoption has been, as we know, over the last years has been exponential. Where exactly is this particular solution deployed? Well, you'll be familiar with the term software as a service. So that's the model that, that they've approached here. And Cisco has deployed this multi-tenant in their own cloud, right? So you uh, subscribe. Uh, you securely connect your environment. As I mentioned earlier, there are ways that that's done and you use it as a software as a service model from Cisco. So, you know, they, they retain all of the uh, things around the, the disaster recovery, the, the, the making sure that your data is safe and all of that. But ultimately, it's delivered as a software as a service model, uh, kind of like our Gmail used to be or is today, uh, essentially, for, for those who, you know, go on that sort of analogy. But really a software as a service model that you can deploy it on on prem. You know, in some cases in the public sector environment, the you know, traffic is not allowed to leave the premises. So then you can do an on-prem, right? So they will do an on-prem for you as well. But essentially, the most efficient way to do it is for us to use it and consume it from the cloud. Now, Brett, is this an open or is it a, a closed type of architecture? So, so a very good question. You know, that's the whole thing these days. It's all about what they call REST APIs. And these kind of things allow us to connect other vendors to be able to manage storage uh, from other vendors and not you know for, uh, across the board there are certain vendors that are already supported for example and new vendors can be brought on with the programming interface essentially and that allows us to have a central view but also have non cisco vendors in the mix because you know cisco knows that you know they're not the only ones particularly in the storage space so um, that's what it's, it's very much an open API that is published. And uh, we were able to configure lastly, just to mention to you, uh, there is an existing plugin to the ServiceNow service desk uh, environment. So we can have a, a service desk also plugged in here. So for example, if something's going wrong with the server, we know about it, but people are calling in and logging calls. There's that integration between support and what's going on in the cloud or with the service itself.
How, how is this different from the competition and, and what's out there at the moment? Yeah, I think, you know, there's, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, there's that distinct in previously and still in the market today, a distinct uh, difference between application monitoring and performance and optimization and infrastructure being your bare bones servers and your, and your network and that sort of thing. There's usually a, a two different uh, platforms that manage that, let's say, typically in the market. And, and this brings that together uh, and then allows us to have one sort of central single plane of glass. I know that's overused a little bit in the market, but it really does allow us to look at it from application all the way down to the temperature of your data center, uh, which often can, can also influence your service. Look, at the end of the day, Brett, every business has a challenge that needs to be solved. So what exactly does this solve for customers? Yeah, I think we've talked about the monitoring, the management, right? That's important. But what about if I need to, you know, I mentioned earlier, I want to go and deploy a new server and there are products out there that will go and deploy a server in the cloud for me. But what about once it's deployed, what does it look like and how is it performing and how's the network performing to support it, as I mentioned? So that's that for us, I believe, solves quite a few challenges in terms of when we're migrating to cloud, understanding, you know, have we invested? Is it performing for us? Can we scale back? Can we optimize the costs? And then things like workflows for customers, they want to have a workflow around deploying a new service. Um, they want to, in that workflow, also have a rollback point, you know, for new, new stuff. Um, and then lastly, the telemetry, which means, you know, having insight to the environment, having tech cases logged automatically really allows me to have an operational uh, efficiency. And, you know, we've had feedback from some customers where there's a 10, time, 10 times improvement of operational efficiency. Uh, and comments like, no, no more babysitting of the data center, you know. So, so these are things that are important. And then, you know, most important for me is things like threat feeds integrated to Cisco. So now if we talk, we all know Cisco is heavily involved with security and, and cyber security. So the threat feeds are integrated. So when you have a blast radius of a, of a new vulnerability, immediately all of the hardware compatibilities uh, in the actual solution are checked automatically. So, you know, this network card or that uh, vulnerability is all checked and those are then prompted for updates, um, either automatically or by the user. So I think, you know, those kind of things. And then lastly, from an inventory point of view, you know exactly what you have and what you're paying for and how it's performing. You know, so th th that's really important from a customer point of view. Now, from a Nexio point of view, what does this mean? This uh, th th this participation with Cisco. What does this mean for Nexio? Yeah, I think you know, for us, we, we started out as in the old days, as you mentioned, we had a data center her heritage, and we started out as StoreTech. We now rebranded to Nexio, and data center is in our DNA. And it's a very strong area for us. And, and for us, we, we like this approach. We've supported uh, you know, this from a Cisco point of view and continuing to evolve this from a technology offering. So we want to be the best in the business at deploying this kind of technology and running it for our customers or enabling our customers to do so themselves. So really, you know, that for us is, is, is close to home. We have a lot of data center deployments out there with, with legacy ones where this can apply. You know, and we can go... And, and essentially optimize the, uh, the environment and create operational efficiencies. Now, Brett, licensing is a key here, and we know how sensitive an issue licensing is. How is this particular product licensed? Yeah, so, yeah, so you have sort of uh, mainly three tiers of license. You have a base tier, which you can go and uh, unlock, and, and essentially you can... Uh, do a sort of a POV and test this yourself. And then they have an essentials and advantage and a premier license. Now, that's, that's interesting because each one of those could take us, uh, you know, half a day just to describe what is in essentials, what's in advantage and what is in premier. But typically they've been quite smart about it to allow for perhaps a smaller business to go for the essentials option because they don't need all the bells and whistles. Uh, but They've, they, they being Cisco, have, have structured the licensing and the features you get according to what I think the market is looking for. And that's, a, a, to me, a plus. Uh, it's a typical, uh, let's call it vendor licensing model, but I think the features within each model have been well thought through. And, uh, you know, we'd have to take each customer through those in detail to make sure we model it according to them and make sure that they are essentially paying the right, um, you know, value at the end of the day. So... Um, I hope that answers your question, but essentially it's, it's quite 
quite well structured, Aki. And, you know, uh, there is also plugins, as was mentioned earlier, Cisco's uh, developing other technology in and around InterSite, being the central, it's becoming really the central place for all data center management, let's call it, you know, from a Cisco strategy point of view. But, you know, you, there are other things that might be interesting to you and not me uh, within the whole licensing and also additional services infrastructure. Brett Orwin, Executive Head of Department, Network and Collaboration at Nexio South Africa. Thanks for joining us for What's Next, talking about Cisco Intersight. Appreciate your time, Brett, and wishing you a fantastic 2022. Thank you for your time. Likewise, Aki. Appreciate it. Pleasure to be here. Thank you very much.